person. The Solution Jazz Festival was developed primarily to address some challenges we had with the seasonality and the flow of arrivals to the destination. And it was thought that if we put an international festival that had a strong pull in the international markets and also regional as well, at a time when the numbers of the visitors to St. Lucia were traditionally low, it would cause a resurgence of some sort and address that level of seasonality. We have transitioned from the original objective of just getting visitors to the island at a low point to now broaden it to the point where we are using the festival to showcase St. Lucian art and creativity as a, from an economic perspective. At the same time, we are using it as a platform for developing the arts. And those three objectives, from making St. Lucia attractive and known in the marketplace, um, creating a platform for development of the arts and showcasing St. Lucia's unique culture and heritage, it has all fused into the strong pool and it's a very important marketing tool for the destination. The very first year we had this jazz festival here, my function was to be in charge of the roadies because um, it was necessary for everybody to come on board. And that's what I did for the first year or two before I started to perform. This is how committed I was to seeing that this comes to fruition. And this has grown into a festival where the entire country is on board. Alan Chastney and Paxton Baker, I think maybe a couple other people. And we spoke about this grand idea of creating a new festival for St. Lucia. From that moment, I knew that I wanted to be able to offer services to the, to the jazz festival. And at the time, I was already uh, involved in theater and carnival and shows and stuff. So I saw that as an exciting new frontier to be involved in. And um, it's, it's been growth from there on. We started off um, talking about the basic stuff like the the poster design and our company and um, landmark events we've done about six of the posters over the years and that was a critical thing for us because it started off with the very identity of the festival what it was saying and and who it was appealing to and what the message was that we were trying to get out and then we got into stuff like stage management we got into lighting and then we got into full production and um, at, at several venues so we would always be working with the uh, Senator Tourist Board to make the festival grow and expand. We'll be working with the uh, artists and the managers and the technical directors for various acts. It was absolutely amazing to be exposed to all of those various influences and see the festival become so international in its, in its perspective. Well, I first came to St. Lucia um, through an invitation from a local saxophonist called Luther Francois many years ago. And soon after that, in 1994, I made my first appearance on main stage here in St. Lucia with a group that was managed by a Trinidadian known as Schofield Pilgrim, who's passed on, but he really helped mentor a lot of young jazz musicians in Barbados. And that was my first real big festival in the Caribbean. We're all very young. We're all, you know, trying to experiment with what jazz was and fusing it with Caribbean music. You know, um, we, were, we were really caught up in the music. I mean, I remember um, seeing a helicopter come in because Wynton Marcellus arrived and that was the most exciting moment for us, you know, to get to meet him backstage. Throughout the Caribbean, we, we sort of had event tourism all along and we just didn't know it. Uh, and the St. Lucia Jazz Festival really crystallized that and um, really packaged it to create an event and decidedly go and put it out to market within the Caribbean and internationally. And so while it may have always just been happening organically, you know, the festival was one of the first to actually package it and put it in the marketplace as a product um, to sort of create that event tourism and to encourage people to travel for the purpose of a festival or, or an event. BT Networks came on very much in the beginning of the festival. And for a fledgling festival like the Jazz Festival, who, um, you know, may not have had those links with media, not even regionally necessarily, to get that link with an, uh, a US-based um, media production company that could put this festival in the living room of millions of households in the US. It was phenomenal for us. And I mean, 
we they came and partnered with us so there was you know no major cost associated with it they, they became a sponsor for years and they put the festival they would produce a, a feature on the festival every year one hour feature and that was in household a lot of people we did a lot of surveying throughout those years and people would say that they first heard of saint lucia through the saint lucia jazz and arts festival so it really did you know build that brand in the north american marketplace for saint lucia Jazz and Arts experience, um, it started with, um, I was running the cables, I'd be there and waiting on these artists, going to those big artists, Aretha Franklin, rare, India, yeah, I want to see them. And I'm sitting there and just waiting and the guys are telling me, hey, to shape that, wait, when she moves, you move with the cable and I'm there and I'm like, okay, that's my first um, experience with it. So I grew up knowing, you know, to work with artists because being an artist myself, you know that sense of perfection that you want to get everything just right because your audience wants it just right. My first encounter with the, the jazz festival was seeing Santana. Amazing, you know, just, just being there, being around musicians, being around music, watching it. I was like, one day I wanted to do that. I wanted to get there, to do that. From that time, every year it became something that I had to do. Every I never missed a, a jazz festival. I got a long involvement with jazz. In fact, when jazz started 25 years ago, it was primarily organized around hotel venues, and we were one of the first venues. We hosted artists and, of course, visitors coming for jazz. And then this year, for the first time, uh, we hosted Jazz on the Beach. So. We were really excited uh, as part of the 25th anniversary to do an event right here on our own beach with uh, a couple of terrific jazz artists. Um, and so for a first time event, that was kind of fun, as well, of course, to host other jazz performers that were here. Uh, so we're uh, a really key part, I think, of the jazz community along with so many other of the hotels. Well, my first experience um, was one of uh, a spectator. Um, I was a, a young budding musician, just started out, I've been playing saxophone for a couple of years and um, Jazz Festival came around and uh, it was that opportunity to actually see um, you know, mainstream artists and acts uh, perform and, um, and you know, give me inspiration really to uh, continue with what I'm doing as a, as a teenager, whether it was way back then or even now, it's, it's uh, there's a lot of distractions. It's very hard to remain focused in, in playing music when perhaps a lot of your friends are doing other things. So the, the Jazz Festival and being exposed to some of these international artists gave me the, the opportunity and, and the inspiration to, to, to aspire to be on main stage one day.